Welcome to the Kingmaker Podcast. Uh, great episode coming up. We have a couple uh, amazing guests from Dopex. Uh, super excited to to learn about uh, options trading and everything involved in that. Because uh, to be honest, I haven't really messed with that. But uh, first, Alejandro, have you messed around with options in the past? No, I try to stay really clear away. I have no experience. I wanted to. I looked into their protocol. It's really interesting. Um, but last May I got liquidated and since then I just been playing it safe, honestly. <laughs> so yeah, and, and that's probably, you know, the theme of a lot of the conversations we're going to have moving forward is just everything that's happened in crypto. What can we do to protect our positions? And, uh, you know, maybe there is some options, puts, things we can do that, uh, will will help keep us safe but uh i want to turn it over to our guests let them introduce themselves and uh welcome to the podcast guys thank you very much so so hello everyone so we are saitama and halako uh from dopex so so just to give you a very quick uh, introduction uh dopex is the options protocol on our uh and both of us, so Saitama and I, we are guys from the community side of the team. So, so you know, we do the talking, we do the writing, we do the content, we do all of our fun activities, uh, twenty four seven, you know, for your uh, pleasure and enjoyment. Uh, so, any kind of questions uh, you would ever have, feel free to like shoot questions. Feel free to DM. Feel free to tag us on Twitter, on Discord. We will help you with stuff. I was also uh, with the community since day one, so so if, even before we like went live, even before we went like went live with the with the token, so it was last year in April slash May, and then I joined the team in late October. And as for the protocol, right? So so uh, we are the options protocol on Arbitrum. Uh, the idea for for the protocol was created by by our founder, uh, our founder TZ. Uh, he had an idea to build the options protocol on chain a few years ago, and he has been experimenting a lot. Uh, and uh, and as soon as he saw that L twos are coming, he thought that the time is good to finally go live. Uh, so that's why the token sale was conducted last year, so twenty twenty one, late June. Uh, that was basically the exact bottom of last year's bear market. Um, so we were fortunate the bear, which is, I think, uh, something <laughs> right now quite up to date once again. Uh, and uh, we went live with our first product in uh, also late October, early November, where we started a first uh, options vault that allowed users to buy and sell options. And since then, uh, our team has been shipping a lot. Saitama, do you think we should add anything else? Do you want to add something else to the to the overview? Uh, no, uh, not really. Just uh, want to present myself. Uh, sorry, the as a uh, basically as a consumer from a, a user of the dopex protocol uh i started in october and uh, i tried out that's when the first uh, uh, single state option vaults came out so i tried it out and uh, i was like back then i was like uh, just try the protocol without even knowing what it, what it was you know it was just a pin before uh, before anything. <laughs> I didn't even know what, what it was exactly. So I just aped in, I tried it out and uh, I had, I received some uh, APY, which I was like, I, w I was like, holy shit, uh, I'm, I can actually make money out of this. So then I got interested. I started like uh, getting informed in the community. I, I really got into uh, options. I got into uh, how uh, TZ was uh, programming his, uh, the vaults, how, how he was doing everything he was doing. And uh, I applied like last month, so it's been like one month I'm in the protocol. 
and they uh, they to uh, they chose me for uh, to write content and uh, i'm really happy they did so and uh yeah so that's how i started no yeah um i i definitely like that you added in um you aped in before not knowing anything else so i actually brought that up in one of our first interviews is like a lot of people get into their own protocols that way um just aping in first and learning later yeah exactly because uh, for real uh, like it, like it's not it's not an easy protocol to understand that i i understand like when people ask questions and all that i'm like yeah i know uh, you have to go through documents to uh, figure out how it works and everything all right so again in in the backdrop of uh, everything that's gone on in crypto here recently um what are some of those strategies that we can use uh utilizing dopex to to protect our our positions um the question is, what is your view, right? Because because we have the options, uh, right? As, as, as Saitama has already mentioned to, to give super brief overview uh, options, right? They are like the financial instruments, a financial derivative that give you uh, a right, but not an obligation to enter into a transaction in a future on a, at a predetermined price and a predetermined uh, parameters on a given time. So if you are buying an option, right, then you have a right. You have a right to either buy an asset, that's called a call option, or you have a right to sell an asset, that's called a put option. Uh, and given you are buying this right, that's not an obligation, that's a right. You have flexibility. So given you are buying this right, you obviously are facing the option seller, right? And if you have a right, they have the obligation. They have sold you the option. One day you come to them and you say, hey, look, it's time to fulfill your obligation. It's time to settle. Uh, you have to pay them. You have to pay them for this flexibility. You have to pay them for this right. And you pay them the premium. So basically speaking, we have person buying the option, buying this right, buying this flexibility, but in order to have this, they pay a certain premium up front. And if you are the option seller, then you are basically selling this obligation, you are selling this flexibility, you, you would need to fulfill your obligation no matter what, but in exchange, you are receiving a premium, right? You are just saying, well, I am very happy to enter into this transaction with you in the future, but given you have this flexibility to cop out of the contract if it doesn't work for you, and I do not have this, you have to pay me a premium. So we have this kind of asymmetry between the users. And in order to make them whole, uh, first they pay each other a premium. So now the question is, right, what should you do and how should you operate? So when we think about users on like very basic level, of course we can add more complexity and more complexity, but on a very, very basic level, if we have an option, right, we agree that, for example, as I mentioned, we can, for example, buy ETH at the end of the month at $3,000 or like $2,400 or at any other amount of dollars. So the question is, what is your view? What is your horizon? What is your thesis? If you, as a user, believe that we may see uh, some volatility, some, some movements that would be quite wide, right? Uh, you can consider buying options. So if you are, for example, afraid that the price would continue, going down fast, even faster than uh, than the market expects, you can buy options giving you a right to sell the, the asset at the chosen price. These are called the put options. So, so you can think of the put options as if they were the insurance, right? So you just buy a premium to buy the insurance on the assets. Or maybe if you think that, well, we will just moon like crazy, because of the merge, so, so suddenly, you know, like, if would go like crazy, 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 then you can buy the call option, all right? Because the call option will give you a right to buy the asset. So if you think that the price is going to go up 
uh, much faster than the market is expecting, you can buy the call call option to do this. So so if you are buying the options, you if you are you are maybe using them as an insurance. So so if the market swings dramatically, you can uh, you can use them as your insurance, or maybe you are betting that the market is going to move in a very dramatic way. And if you do this, you can also uh, buy the options. But maybe, maybe you you believe you believe that well, it's Goblin Town. Well, we will just crap for the next few weeks, months, whatever. Right? That's you know, for a second, no hope, and then we will be just sitting in some price range. Then uh, you can consider writing the options, right? So so you can become the options writer, so we can become this guy selling this obligation. So if you, for example, are, are thinking that, well, I, you do not believe that if is going to be above a certain price, you can just sell the call options at this time, right? If you like, believe that, like, no way, we will see if go above 2500, like 2700 by the end of the month. Uh, and then you can just sell call options at the strike of 2700 and you can collect premiums from the option buyers, right? So so you are kind of facing like counterparty, you're betting against the other guys. These guys are believing that, that it will go up or maybe they hedge against going up. You think, no, oh, it won't go up. I'm very happy to take the other side of the trade. Uh, you are very happy to collect premiums from these guys. Or maybe you believe we will not go lower, right? So this way you can sell the put options because you think we will like not go lower, we will not go lower than, you know, fifteen hundred, or we will not go lower than eighteen hundred uh, by the end of the week and of the month. If you do this, you can sell the put options, right? And if you are selling the put options, you uh, you will be once again collecting premiums from people buying the options from you. So this way, this way you have to you have to basically if you would use our products, if you are selling the options, you have to post the collateral. Uh, then our vaults would use this collateral to farm. So but you also get farming because well everyone loves single staking, everyone loves farming, so that's the idea behind the single staking option vaults. And you will be receiving premiums. Uh, from all the guys that would buy the options from you, so so this way, if you if you are writing the options right, you receive this kind of a risk-free or like semi-risk-free component from the farms, and you are also receiving this risk-on component from the premiums. So basically speaking, the more risky position you open, like the the options closer to the spot you write, you will receive larger and larger premiums. But there is a larger risk that you may end up paying to the other guy. And if you would like to buy the options, you can interact with our vaults. You can choose the option of a given parameter, if there is liquidity, right? Our vault will calculate the premium for you. Uh, you will have to pay it. And, uh, and then at the end of the epoch, if the option expires in the money, right? If you were right, then you will receive the settlement. So, so pretty much, the question is: What is your investment horizon? Uh, what do you think is going to happen uh, by the end of the month? Uh, if you if you believe that we will not break certain regions, we will not go above or below certain regions. You may like consider writing the options. If you, on the other hand, would like to either capture certain price movements or like protect yourself against certain price movements you can buy the options instead and and that's that's it and this is pretty interesting right because because by buying and selling the options we have basically two parties exchanging risk and paying each other for exchanging this risk so that's why if you are writing the options uh, you are receiving it's like you know with with DeFi, right? Well, when we like go back in time to to the DeFi summer, uh, <laughs> that's how yield farming was born, and and many things got very like local names, right? So we had the whole yield farming, etc., etc. But in general, uh, people in DeFi started 
become a, a huge fan of NPR or APY. Really not, really not thinking about the risk behind this API or like APR because, for example, if you write a new uh, LP on, let's say, Uni or Sushi, then of course your API may look very, very large for some positions or for some farms, but the risk embedded into it may be also quite significantly large. Uh, or maybe you are getting like subsidies by uh, through liquidity mining, so you just receive you know tokens, but maybe you will collect, maybe you will sell and dump. Uh, so interestingly, right with options, with with uh, options, it's quite interesting because this this kind of premiums that that some people like to translate into uh, APY APR. This is the transfer of risk, right? So so you basically take the risk. If you are right, you are able to get some very nice returns on your tokens but if you are not right uh, you might actually end up with some with some loss so so that's why you should be quite uh, mindful uh, right and you should have some kind of horizon have some thesis and and be just aware like have, have some kind of uh, thesis have some kind of thought right where do you think the market is expect you expect is going to be? Or maybe uh, what kind of market event you would like to avoid. Uh, and if you have such a view, if you have such a take, then, then well, you know, options may be a good instrument for you. So, so I think that's pretty much the, the answer. Yeah, so, so you, you just covered a lot of ground there. <laughs> so if we could just unpack a few things. So it, just, just to summarize for my smooth brain here, we have the players involved are those who are buying puts, buying calls, and then you have those that are providing the assets to uh, write the puts and calls. So, so just hearing this, uh, ultimately, you are limited then by the people who are willing to write with the total amount that you can provide. Puts and calls, is that correct? If I, if I could give like a TLDR, basically you have like, like uh, Keith said, you have uh, four, four types of uh, options. You can either write a put, write uh, a call, or you can be on the other side, which you buy the, the put and you buy the call, right? So when you buy uh, the call or the put, you have to pay a premium to the to the writers basically the premium that you pay to the buyers are for the right to be able to uh buy the the, the asset at a, a certain price during a certain time let's say the the option you want to buy is uh eat uh in one month you're gonna have to pay the the, the writer basically uh, a premium for him to give you that options right and uh, the option right so uh, that premium basically for let's say you're let's say you you know you have uh, uh, let's say you have one eat right and uh, you know you want to sell it at four thousand uh, dollars if you if you write options uh basically if you write a call option of eat at four thousand dollars when when uh, it goes above four thousand dollars you're you're basically selling it at four thousand dollars to the buyer right so if you already know you're gonna sell it at four thousand dollars it's basically you're getting yourself a free type of yield which is the premium that the buyers uh, are willing to pay for that right but yeah thanks for the the explanation um i'm glad that you went deeper into that um especially because a lot of people in our community um probably don't realize or think about this like for i saw that you guys have a curve ssov um so that's definitely something i hope in in this podcast, um, talking talking about this and giving them alternative DeFi strategy gives them a way to hedge or use options as as a tool to help their investments. What are some of the other uh, things that are in the pipeline, the Atlantic options and uh, the interest rate options? Fill us in. IR options are just it's just a tool basically that uh, users can use, and then. Uh, depends on them what they how they're gonna uh, gamify basically a curve emissions because uh, IR options are based on the APYs right of the uh, curve so how are uh, APYs are uh, moved with the curve price with the depending on the how many trades are happening on the, them 
uh, there with a bunch of other stuff, right? So how are the users gonna use these tools to gamify this or even DAOs protocols? How, how are they gonna use these? Uh, let's say they, they think the AP, they wanna push out that the APY is gonna go higher. They can gamify it to bring the APY higher by having uh, more votes on the on the pool that they want or uh, like, like I said, like more trades and stuff like that. But uh, like Halko says, it's gonna take time, depending like how much uh, uh, how much people are gonna use this uh, this tool and uh, how much uh, how how long, depending the bear market, how long it's gonna last. What another thing that we are working on, right? It's it's called Atlantic Options, um, and now let us think because because we we have you know basically explained the the overview, what the options are the options uh, on the interest rates uh, but in like layman terms I think how to explain in layman terms Atlantics to, to someone who is like very very fresh to options and I think we should go back to once again our user uh, our user who is that guy looking to hedge right to buy the insurance so so we go back to being this guy who is afraid that the market is going to go down because if the market goes down, some there will be some uh, some events may happen that that the user would prefer to avoid, right? So in order to avoid this, they would buy the put options, and this way, if the market goes down, the put options are going to buy them the money, uh, and this way he is able to avoid at least partially of whatever happens on the market. But there is a thing, right, there is a thing, uh, I, if we take a look, if we take a look at the DeFi, uh, one of, mm, at least what used to be, what used to be quite popular, I'm not sure how it will look like in the future, but what used to be very, very popular was A, uh, or maybe what we can say, what used to be popular were, were like different leveraged plays, right? So A, you can be, for example, using different protocols to borrow and lend. And whenever you borrow and lend, uh, you are, for example, posting assets, borrowing and other assets, and you have a certain liquidation price. You may be doing the same to mean stable coins, right? So you are posting some assets, you are minting a stable stable coin, you have a certain liquidation price. Uh, or maybe you are just a degen. And what do the degens do? Degens uh, love to trade perps. And what degens love to do the most? Trade perps on a large leverage. And what degens don't like the most? Well, liquidations. So, the thing is, if you observe, what happens is a lot of DeFi is built on top of a leverage. And then whenever something bad happens to the market, then I degens get wiped out and everyone else is looking to deleverage very fast, right? So you are looking to deleverage, you're looking to most likely pay extreme gas, to, to stable leverages, and whenever these leverages happen, they may trigger different liquidations, they may trigger different auctions. Uh, in many, many cases, they can trigger, you know, another dumps. So, so as we have observed throughout the past, there were, you know, those different liquidation spirals where Basically, everything goes down because one liquidation triggers another. Uh, people selling assets to cover this triggers more liquidations, etc., etc., etc. And if we go to like step one, we think we we are this guy who has bought a put option. So let's say you are a guy who has bought a put option uh, as an insurance against against the market on ETH. And uh, on the other hand, you have some leverage position, uh, maybe in like borrowing lending protocol, CDB protocol, whatever it is. 
And the thing is that if the market goes down, uh, your option, if it ends up in the money, you, you end up winning on the option, but at the same time, um, in that other protocol, you will get liquidated. So even though one protocol will pay you money, the other protocol still liquidates you. And that's what you would try to avoid. Or even in a worst case, you get liquidated, and when the price goes up, and then uh, the option expires worthless. So even though you technically had a protection, it didn't work for you, you got liquidated. Well, so our idea was that, well, everything is on chain, right? Blockchain is like large one, large database. So it's very easy to verify if you are using different levels of, of leverage in various protocols. And then you are also buying options in our protocol. It is possible, it is possible to merge them together and to create Atlantic options. What does it mean? That means in like very, very layman terms, you can buy the options in Dopex, you can have a master contract that would be moving collateral from Dopex to the other protocols to cover against the liquidations. So this way, these options that you are buying, they are not only giving you uh, some PNL, some profits or losses at the expiry, they would also protect you against various adverse events during the life of the option on other protocols. I definitely I definitely love that you explain further like other ways that you're planning to is it is the profit turn capital efficiency? Well I don't know. They like, add more use cases and ways that locked holders of uh, vote locked uh, CVX holders can use their capital because at the moment there isn't much for us to do. Um, but out of like really quickly in the past month there's been all these like products and like use cases that people have been adding to CVX but um, it would be really nice for you to give this option an opportunity to actual lockers um, to like yeah they can have a lock they can start earn the the APY or ROI but um, but um, they can also like do more with their capital or, or collateral instead so I think I don't know if Keith um, would I don't know, like, if Keith sees the potential, but at least I do. Like, I, I see a lot of people, if you guys ship that one day, if everything goes good, that I, I could definitely see it getting attraction. Yeah, certainly, certainly. And, and more more uh, options of what to do with the, with your uh, vote lock CVX, the, the better, for sure. So let, let's just end on, on this question. It is 2025. Everything has the roadmap has gone perfectly. Everything's gone as planned. Uh, what does perfection look like for DopeX in twenty twenty five? Saitama, what do you think? <laughs> uh, DopeX is something that if everything goes like like we say, like everything goes fine, is gonna be something incredible. Like I, I, I'm not being like I try not to be biased, but like uh, be, even before I started with DopeX. Uh, I really believe like uh, the things they're building is insane. Like uh, RDPX V2 with uh, the stable coin we're going to mint also. Uh, it just brings out like a whole new ecosystem. And uh, the more products we bring out, the more uh, the more there's going to be uh, demand for our products. So uh, yeah, so that's uh, I, I can't like I can't like go over too much because there's so much so much uh, Dopex is offering and it would be <laughs> it would take hours to be honest to explain everything. Well, I think, you know, in 2025, I, I don't think if we will, you know, manage to achieve perfection by that time, because uh, because I think, you know, the, the thing with DeFi is that DeFi is constantly evolving, right? If we would go back by a year, like one year ago, CVX didn't really exist, right? I don't know, when, when was CVX launched? It was April last year? Maybe, I don't remember. Yeah, so if we would like go year and a half, you know, there were many things in DeFi that are like staples today and they haven't existed last year, which means until 2025, we are going to see more and more products, more and more ideas, more and more solutions. 
uh, and which means we uh, as database we need to also answer and to see how can we ut utilize them how can we answer to this right how can we create something together so I do not think you know we will ever like achieve perfection it's more like constant process of, of you know building an iteration and building an iteration and you know the and everything is in this state of like constant flow right and then and change so so of course our our dream would be to have uh, a few like products that always you know work that they have like you know users community tdl and they are like our bread and butter but also have these different auxiliary experimental products where we can test the waters and just see what what works what doesn't but i think that our our kind of idea our kind of dream is you know is maybe i think it's like from day one basically if you if you it's not like to when it comes to the options we when when we think about the options when if people would just think you know uh, options for like you know uh, wall street bad apes uh, or like pro traders but the thing is that with options there is much 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 more usage possibilities than that and we would really really love to keep evolving and uh, and be this kind of you know a, a house that creates uh, and allows users to move the risk around you know to, to help people hatch to help people size up their risk so so we would be happy to see dopex as a protocol that actually stabilizes the whole ecosystem right because it, we would help take away risk from users that don't want to have it to other users that want to have it so so maybe if everything works you know we will help stabilize the market you know stabilize the DeFi market uh by limiting the liquidations creating backstop you know helping regular users by allowing them to hedge one way or another so average average like user would be able to avoid all those events that happened last week uh we would you know on board more users and like unlock more and more value to the whole uh, ecosystem to, to, to the DeFi ecosystem which would be this kind of flow this kind of organic change of risk and premium for that risk that doesn't rely on you know printing tokens and and issuing liquidity mining rewards so so our kind of you know dream is to basically to help stabilize the whole DeFi, to help it grow you know and and be the place that helps move this risk around and uh, move this risk away from from the places that should not be exposed to this risk so so that's our kind of hope dream let's see how it all goes you know 2025 is still far away but but we will we will do this yeah, um, this is definitely a learning curve for me. I definitely, I definitely appreciate that you guys went out the way to explain it in as layman terms as possible, um, especially for some smooth brain like me. So, I and I'm sure the rest of the community are gonna appreciate all the different ways that they can implement this because I'm, I'm sure a lot of the, I'm sure a lot of the community members are not aware of like the capabilities or like the options that they have available <laughs> um so yeah and i just wanted to say the last few things so um I, if you want show if there's anything you want to show or announce go ahead um tell people where they could find you guys where they could follow um and all that before we close off for the day yeah so uh guys dopex.io is our website check our blog uh follow us on twitter follow saitama on twitter like follow saitama on twitter because the guy is now uh, you know writing incredible threads and explain us so he really really you know needs more and more reach and if you would check saitama's uh twitter profile then you will see that not only 
that's a very very cool piece of writing and explain us but he is also a great guy uh when it comes to the graphics designers especially if you are the uh opm fan uh check our blog we have like check, check it off expedia but the most importantly uh join our discord so you know you build also follow tz if you can because yeah. uh, tz uh, has perfect uh, yeah. yeah follow our founder dz because basically speaking you know you have asked us about 2025 and i think dz is already in like 2030 Kingmaker Podcast.